All right, so this video is going to go over a few of the ways that Dynamo for Revit is extremely broken when it comes to package authors. Uh, so let's get right into it. If you've seen recently on the Dynamo forum, I posted a post asking about Rhythm for Dynamo availability for the community. As you may or may not know, Rhythm's a package I've been developing since uh, 2015 uh, for Dynamo. Uh, so going on a little over eight years now, and it's evolved from out-of-the-box nodes that are bundled as custom nodes to Python, to C-sharp, to C-sharp with the view extension. And it's remained C-sharp for since about 2017, 2018. Uh, that's worked great. Part of the reason I jumped to C-sharp was because of the Dynamo 2.0 format change. So Dynamo used to come in a flavor that was an XML-based file. They changed it to a JSON-based file, making nodes not backwards compatible if they were DYFs. So I jumped to C-sharp. Thankfully, that backwards compatibility thing is pretty much in the rear view now. Uh, any graph that's 1.3 or older, I haven't seen anything that's older than a 2.0 graph in a few years now, thankfully. If you're still on those old versions, I don't know what to tell you, uh, but those graphs are really, really old. Uh, with Revit 23 and Revit 24, it's became increasingly difficult to manage a package across versions of Revit. I'm going to demo this live on this video, uh, and I have an open source repo that shows how to do this with a minimal reproducible case. Uh, anyone who programs loves a minimal reproducible case, so Dynamo team, I'm making this for you to check it out. Hopefully we can get this resolved. Uh, I have it resolved for Rhythm on my own, which another video will cover. This is the first video though, because I got to show the problem to everyone. Uh, so go visit this post. You can read up on it and all the options. Uh, part of the reason this has been kind of weighing on me pretty heavily uh, lately is because, I mean, these five tabs that I have open are all bugs that have happened either with rhythm not loading, the warnings that happen or something like that, nodes missing, all sorts of madness. And they happen pretty often. This one's from August 1st. This one's from August 7th. This one's from August 8th. Uh, this one's from August 3rd. And I made a joke. This one's actually Archilab not loading in Revit 24, which is also a problem. And another one from July, another one from August. So this is only a sampling of them, but this happens daily, um, weekly, if not daily, that I'll get a ping on the forum that says, hey, it's not loading. My graph doesn't work. And I'm coding it the same way I've been coding it for going on five years now. That's very difficult to deal with. Um, it's pretty hard as a package author. It's mentally um, daunting to try to fix things that are getting broken that you didn't break. Uh, so I've been having to look at it throughout this week to figure out how to fix this just because if I don't figure something out, I'm just going to deprecate. The term deprecate means to mark as obsolete rhythm. That's not happening right now, but that is an option if I can't get this figured out just because of the toll it does take to manage the package. Uh, the other option is to run an installer like Orchid. Uh, I don't like that option because you're going to probably use the package manager more often than not. So enough of the background, let's go ahead and get right into the sample. Uh, so I have Visual Studio open, and what this is is just a zero touch example with very minimal things in here. Let's remove some of these unused things, and we'll kind of see what we're doing. In this case, it's a simple package that is a Revit zero touch multi-version example. We have one node in here called of category and view. So what we're doing is we're collecting all of the elements of a given category in a given view. There are a ton of notes on this example. It's actually kind of a nice example if you're getting started with zero touch as well, even though the whole point is to demonstrate a bug as well. So it's kind of a, a cool example in that way. So I didn't ever think to make something like this, but now we have it, which is pretty cool. Uh, inside of this Visual Studio solution, we do have NuGet packages referenced. My references are the Dynamo services, so 2.18, because I'm targeting Revit 2024 for this package, as a lot of package authors might do. I also am targeting the 2.18 um, Revit library, so that includes Revit nodes.dll and Revit services.dll. These are how you get your converters, and these are how you get your transaction manager. 
Another one is the zero touch library that imports some of the Dynamo libraries that you need. So 2.18 as well. And finally, I'm referencing the Revit API. Uh, Revit API 2024, because once again, I'm making this package thinking about the highest version I support, which is Revit 24, hoping it is backwards compatible. Uh, stepping through this code, we have our node name here. We have an input of a category. Revit.elements.category is the Dynamo version of category. Revit elements views view. That is the Dynamo version of view. So anytime you see Revit.elements, you will see that little green clicky ID in the canvas. Uh, so that's kind of what that does for us. We get our current document. Once again, that's from the Revit services DLL. And we get our category, the internal Revit category, by using this method called get category. Uh, so that just exists in Revit for us to be able to get it by the element ID. In this case, we are getting the category ID from Dynamo. And you can see if I hover, it says long on it. That long is the data type of the ID. Previously in Revit, IDs used to be integers. Uh, Revit 24 actually lets us uh, kind of use multiple versions of that, but Dynamo is strictly longs now. They changed it in Revit 24, and that's kind of causing some issues here. Uh, we also cast the Revit view. Thankfully, you can just do internal element for the Revit database view. And then we build a filtered element collector to get our elements. These are raw Revit database elements. And then we return them as Dynamo elements utilizing the 2DS type uh, conversion in here. Uh, you've probably seen this in Python scripts as well if you're a Python user. Uh, when I click true, that's actually saying the element exists in Revit. We have an option of false as well, uh, but there are cases where that can vary. So we can change that also uh, here in a moment. So I do have this compiled. I have the package loaded on my folders. So let me open those folders now. All right, so I have the zero touch loaded on my Dynamo Revit 2024, zero touch version example with one DLL uh, on 2.16, which is Revit 23, one version difference, mind you, I have the same package loaded. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start in Revit 24 and we'll open Dynamo real quick. Uh, once again, all I have is this package loaded. I do have some plugins loaded, but they shouldn't clash with any of this. And we'll click on new and we'll see that we have our Revit zero touch multi-version example. We have one collector in here. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and do active view. Now uh, let's switch views. Let's go ahead and go to a floor plan. That way we actually have some elements to collect. Cool. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click on active view. Awesome. And then we have to get our current document. We're using all out of the box nodes for this just to keep it fair. Awesome. And then we'll drop our categories node as well. Let's go ahead and collect walls because I know there's walls in this model. Plug that in and we'll plug that in. We are on run automatic worth noting. So we will see run completed and very cool. We see walls. So if I were building a graph as like a BIM manager uh, in the latest version of Dynamo, I would build it like this and then I would save it. I will just kind of leave it in this folder on my desktop and we'll do collector sample. So I have this saved, we're in Dynamo 2.18. That first number, two dot, pretty important to keep in mind because that means that it should work in any other version that starts with a two. Uh, we'll close out Dynamo in Revit 24 and we'll minimize Revit 24. Opening Revit 23, we'll just navigate to a floor plan as well. We'll go to manage Dynamo. We'll get Dynamo loaded up and we should see one package as well. So what I'll do is I'll start a blank workspace first and then we'll take a look at it. Uh, I also have all these ones that just come with Revit, by the way. So yeah, those load in add-ons, which also sucks, but okay. Uh, we will see that we have the one node. Let's go ahead and open that graph. We'll open it. We'll open it and then we also uh, will build it from scratch. We'll open in manual execution mode. So I can see that I have wall selected. I have my current document and my active uh, view. Let's unplug these and run it and just see what happens. Cool, we got our walls and we got our view. Plug this in and hit run. This is where the problem occurs. 
In Dynamo for Revit 2024, the team made a very conscious decision to change the element IDs to longs. In the Revit API, it's been marked for deprecation uh, that you can't use integers anymore, but it's not removed. So we kind of got ahead of the cart there uh, when it comes to Dynamo for Revit uh, to where it's already getting converted. There are other ways to try to get this to work, um, to where you can convert it, get the category by name, which I don't suggest uh, because that just never works cross language, but it's broke. That Dynamo package that I just built will only ever work in Revit 24 and up. The fun part is if I were to rebuild that to work for Revit 23, it will now not work in Revit 24. It's this back and forth chase that just doesn't work for us. Just to kind of send this point home a little, if I were to create a new element ID just using the Revit database element ID, so just to keep it fully transparent, dot autodesk dot revit dot db dot element ID. If I were to create a new element ID, I have two ways to do that in the Revit API. I can use an integer, which is cool. That helps me out quite a bit. Or I can use the newly established long that's been available in Revit 24. When it comes to Dynamo, I can't use the integer variant anymore. And that's just awful. And it broke effectively every zero touch package from working in more than one version of Revit if it touches Revit 24. As a package author, I didn't expect this to happen and it kind of got me. Uh, so what we're going to do is let's go ahead and rebuild this to make it work uh, for Revit 23 real quick. And what I'll do is I'll probably time-lapse or cut through this just because once again, since it is a DLL based package, I have to open and close Revit now. Uh, so let's get through this real quick and you can kind of see how I update my references. All right, so all those references are updated. We are now referencing the Revit 2023 API and the appropriate Dynamo versions as well. So let's see. So we are referencing 23 and Dynamo 2.16 all around. In this case, if we come in here, we'll see that I don't have any kind of uh, changes in here that broke anything directly apparent to me. However, if I hover on the category.id, we will see that that says int. So in Revit 23, Dynamo's own, Dynamo's own libraries are returning an integer, which is fine because that's going to work fine for me. I'll go ahead and hit rebuild on this and we'll just kind of navigate to the repo. So let's see, repos, it goes in the bin folder release. So we do have the multi-version example here. What I'm going to do is just to get this loaded on Revit is I'll go into Dynamo 218 packages, bin, and then I'll paste and overwrite. So that's Revit 24, 2.16 is Revit 23, and we have the new version of the DLL. So once again, we'll skip through this, but I'm going to open Revit 23 and 24, and we can take a look at them. All right, so now we have Revit 23 open. We'll navigate to a floor plan, and we'll go to manage Dynamo once again. Once Dynamo opens, we're just going to reuse this collector sample that we already built because it's the same nodes, it's the same library. We'll open it, it is on run automatic, and what are we gonna see? We see that in Revit 2023, so once again, I'm in Revit 23, this is now working. So as a package developer uh, or an end user of Dynamo that I'm shipping this package to, uh, we're excited. We're like, oh, this works. Go ahead and use it. Here's the updated package. Yay, good for you. If I open Revit 24 and try this out now, so let's say I have two teams on Revit 24 and we go to manage Dynamo. We'll open that same sample graph and let's take a look how my team in Revit 24 works. Or in my case, as a package developer, uh, user A on the forums in Revit 23, user B is in Revit 24, and then we have a user C who's still in Revit 2020 for whatever reason. Uh, so this is the second user. Let's open that same graph that we have available to us. It is now broken in Revit 24. Uh, this just doesn't work. Chasing this bug is very difficult. Uh, there are some ways to fix it. You don't use the 2DS type maybe and it might work. Um, 
even then the built-in category is breaking for me. Uh, if I have any element getting output, the converters try to take it over. If I target a certain one, all this stuff starts breaking and uh, Dynamo's APIs don't resolve on the fly. So it's severely broken. Uh, I do have some fixes in place that I'll show in the next video because this one's probably pretty long uh, for rhythm. But essentially, I'm loading rhythm DLLs on the fly that are built for the appropriate version of Revit. It should still work in player, although player is not going to be my biggest priority. Uh, my biggest priority is to eliminate this warning. Um, so yeah, that's kind of uh, the next video. Let's wrap up this video though with a few thoughts. Um, so th the way I see this being able to be fixed by the Dynamo team, so kind of like the call for action here, is issue a hotfix for this uh, to where the Dynamo Revit libraries have a patch in them to allow integers as well. So if we have this uh, Dynamo services and Dynamo Revit DS, that's where our converters for the 2DS type live, issue, an, issue a hotfix that lets us use integers still and you convert it to longs on the back end or something. Revit 24 still technically supports integers. So why it was removed abruptly is just really, really not cool. Uh, so if you were to issue a hot fix that fixes that for us, we would have a way simpler time making our packages cross compatible. Um, BIMORPH nodes actually has one node that this impacts as well to where it's a collector of a category as well. Uh, in recent versions of Revit, so I don't want anyone to get hung up on the exact example I used uh, because that node does exist in uh, Dynamo for Revit. This happens if you use anything with the Revit API. I mean, Rhythm is a package that uses a ton of nodes that convert them and output them and things like that. Um, so yeah, if you were to issue a hotfix, uh, it would fix it. That would have to come with a Revit point release though because now Dynamo only comes with Revit. So it's just this really weird thing that's compiled over time that's made it very, very difficult to interact with. Additionally, another package that's available out there that tons of users use is Archilab. If I look at the details for Archilab, this is how I have to install it. Most users are going to click this install button, but the way you're supposed to install Archilab is you click on view details. You scroll down till you find the last two numbers that match your Revit version. In this case, I don't see a 24. That's because Archilab has not been updated for Revit 24. And that's not a bash on Archilab or Conrad. He has his reasons he hasn't updated, but users who now want to use this in Revit 24 can't for more reasons than these bugs. Uh, but installing it this way is very difficult and confusing. We get questions on the forum a few times a week about how to install Archilab. Uh, so it's another one of those things that he tried to fix it his own way, and it's still not perfect. Um, and this is going to further get compounded by these bugs as well that I've demonstrated on this video. Um, so yeah, anyone watching from the Dynamo team as well, you guys know how to get a hold of me. Uh, I want to see this fixed. I want to keep developing for Dynamo for Revit, but these kind of changes are just so awful. It just makes it so hard to manage this. And you know, it, it honestly sucks having to reply to users like, Hey, this isn't working. You need to use this Python script. I just pasted. Hey, this isn't working in Revit 23. Sorry. Hey, this isn't working. Uh, let me fix it. All of those responses add up in time involved that I'd rather just be coding, not having to chase bugs that I didn't do. Um, so yeah, once again, the link to the forum post is in the description for this. So go check that out. And I'll have the next video that shows how Rhythm's working in all these versions uh, with a workaround that I've had to develop as well. So yeah, thanks for checking out this video. Apologies for kind of the different video here. It's not a real tutorial. Uh, but it is something that I think I needed to broadcast just because as a quote power user of Dynamo, uh, I like to think of myself as a voice for the whole community as well. And this is something that's taking a toll on all the package authors and packages make up a big part of Dynamo. And I think we need to all rally for it to be better. So yeah, we'll see you in the next video. What I hear when I'm being yelled at is people caring loudly at me.